Hello everyone, this is Katie Martin of Harvest Goods Company and today we will be stitching the Barn Owl and Buttercups pattern from our subscription. This is our February pattern. Even if you're not subscribed, of course you can use this video to help you stitch your pattern. We will link the patterns below. Now we will be going over what we're using to stitch this kit. We are using gorgeous gray Terra Textilia linen as well as a Harvest Goods Co small hoop it's about four and a half inches the embroidery floss a needle I'm using size five here it's my favorite size for sure and you will also need a friction heat erasable pen some embroidery snips I love the friction pen so if you haven't gotten one you can grab one in my shop so first things first, transfer our pattern onto the fabric. I like to get my fabric actually loaded, especially with linen. I like to make sure that the fabric is fully warped so it's as tight as you want it to be. And then I will go ahead and use my heat erasable pen and transfer this on there. The app that I'm using right here isn't actually available anymore, but it is basically a light box app. So you can search that if you're looking for something like that. And once you get your pattern all the way traced on, you go ahead and take the fabric out of the hoop and flip it around to the other side of the hoop. I would call this the stitching side of the hoop and re-tighten your fabric, re-warp it. And when you tap it, it should sound like a drum again. And then when you're done, go ahead and trim that excess fabric around the hoop. I like to leave about half an inch around my hoop, but I find that my workflow is so much better when I do this. So we're going to go ahead and start by stitching the eyes. I'm using one strand of the white floss and I am beginning at the inner corner of the eye and working to the outer corner of the eye. So the corner closest to the beak to the outer corner. And I am doing this by creating a infrastructure from following the curve of the eye. So you'll see that my stitches fan out at the corner and then they come back together at the other end of the eye. There's a diagram in the pattern in the kit that show you what I'm talking about if that doesn't make sense. So and if you're unfamiliar with long and short stitch I'll go ahead and link our video to to our long and short stitch tutorial that we have to make it a little more simple for you. But as you can see, this is really easy. I'm basically just filling in the space of the eye with stitches, but also creating curve and dimension with my stitches. So go ahead and fill in the other eye, and then we are going to fill in the face stitches. These are so simple. They're just one strand of your white floss and you are covering up the pattern with straight, tiny lines. These lines are very, very short and they vary in angle and direction. So just follow your pattern here and think about it as when you're tracing letters as a child or just trying to go over something, this is the exact same idea. So just go over your pattern around the eyes and around the beak on the inner side of the face with small straight stitches. Next, we're gonna go ahead and stitch the beak. And all this is is straight stitches that meet in a point. So you create a bit of a triangle here. You see I have two sides of a triangle, but I'm not going to finish out the top half. I'm just going to fill this space in with short straight stitches that all meet at the same point until that space is all filled. And the top of the beak does not have to be perfectly straight at all. It actually looks better if it's a little bit jagged on the edge, a little more organic. So don't worry about getting that exactly perfect on the beak. So next we are going to stitch these framing feathers around the eyes and the face feathers and the beak. And you can see these stitches are a little bit round. And the way that I do this is I use couching stitches. So I just stitch a straight stitch, but before I pull my floss 
all the way through the fabric. I bring my needle back through just to the side of where the center would be and then I tack that stitch down and this is what creates the little curve in each stitch and you'll see that around the face also there's a few little straight stitches. It's a mix but just practice this little couching stitch all the way around the face and each stitch is individual. You don't have to line a bunch up row after row and just fill that space in and we will use this stitch also later in the pattern. Next we're going to go ahead and stitch the outline of the bird. This is so simple. We're just still using one strand of the white floss and all you're going to do is split stitch all the way around that curved line and just go ahead and tie it off when you're done and we'll move on to the next part. But this is so simple, so easy and create such a beautiful clean line. So we're going to go ahead and use that same couching stitch and add the larger feathers to the chest and wing of the bird. And you can see that I am just putting my floss through the fabric on each end of the feather. And even if they're not even or line up perfectly, that doesn't matter. And then I am pulling my floss through at the where the feather curves. And then we're going to go ahead and add in these smaller feathers on the top of the head. These again are just straight little stitches, just like we did around the face. These are also just one strand, so we've only used one strand so far. And I'm adding little couching stitches, final touches for these little feathers right here. And then we're going to go ahead and use two strands of white floss now. So we've been using one this whole time and we're going to go ahead and move to two and we're going to use two strands of floss to fill in these feathers on the body. You can see that they're just straight stitches. So all I'm doing is covering up my pattern with these straight little stitches on the rest of the bird. This pattern is so simple. Okay, next we're going to stitch the buttercups and first thing we're going to do is we're going to use one strand of our green floss and we are going to split stitch all the way down the main stem and then add in our auxiliary stems. There are three auxiliary stems with buds in them. You will see that they create like a little bulb at the end of the stem. So in order to create that, all you do is split stitch your stem and then add a French knot to the end of the stem. I like to pull my French knot out a bit away from the stem almost to elongate it, but you can just add it straight to the end of the stem. That's totally fine and it'll create the same idea. If you're unfamiliar with French knots, we will link the video down below of our tutorial for French knots. So go ahead and finish off your stems and your buds and we'll go ahead and move on to the leaves. So for the leaves, I'm actually using two strands of the green floss and for the smaller leaves, I'm just very simply satin stitching the area of the smaller leaves. Each leaf is three to four stitches each. Super simple. And then for the larger leaf, what you're going to do is you are going to break it up into two halves. So I like to stitch a guide stitch and then go ahead and satin stitch the rest of the area on one side of the leaf. And you can see I'm just following the pattern. So when the pattern goes in, my stitches go in and the angles change. If this is a little bit confusing to you, we can also link the long and short stitch tutorial for you so you can watch me stitch a leaf in this way and how the angles change. But you can just see right here, it's really simple. I'm basically just filling it in, but as I fill it in, the angle changes as I work closer to the stem. 
So we're gonna just go ahead and fill in all those leaves. Okay, to stitch the buttercups, we're gonna go ahead and use two strands of the yellow floss. And what I like to do is satin stitch each petal one at a time, and then add a French knot at the center when all five petals have been stitched. And then for the bud, the flowers that haven't been fully opened yet, I like to start with the center petals and overlap each petal on top of the last one. This kind of makes it look like it's unfolding a bit. But again, just two strands of the yellow floss. Once you've got them stitched, I like to use one strand of the white floss and add a straight stitch to the center of each petal, just following the angle of each individual petal, just to add a little bit of dimension. This is totally optional, but I love the subtle difference it makes. And then finally, when you have finished all of that, go ahead and use two strands of the light pink floss and seed stitch around your entire design. I have the pattern laid out for you that you can just stitch right over or you can add or take away from these stitches, but they just add a little bit of whimsy and movement to the piece. So as long as you're following the general curve of the piece, you really can't go wrong. So you can see I'm keeping the angles the same as the general design. And again, these are just simple two-stranded straight stitches. Once you have gotten your whole design stitch, you've repeated those steps on the other side of the hoop. You can actually go ahead and if you use a heat erasable pen, you can put a hair dryer on high over your design and the pen will totally disappear, which is really great. And then you will be left with your design totally finished and we can go ahead and back it. I'm starting at the hardware around this extra fabric that I've left around the hoop and I'm all I'm doing is a running stitch and I will end at the hardware and I'm starting on the inside of the fabric and I also end on the inside of the fabric so I can tie them together and then once I've done that running stitch all the way around I go ahead and cinch it really tight and do a double knot and trim my excess floss and you're done and your hoop is ready to display and you did it great job